it was brought to my attention that non-constituency member, Mr. Leong Man Wai, was interviewed for a podcast, Yala But. This was hosted by Harish and Terence, and which appeared in YouTube, TikTok, and on various days in May 2024. Mr. Leong also shared the podcast on his Facebook page. During the interview, the following exchange took place between Harish, the interviewer for Yala Bhatt, and Mr. Leong. Mr. Harish said, whenever the speaker says, OK, any questions, you're one of the first to put your hands up. Mr. Leong Wen Wai replied, and one of the last to be called. Hereafter, I'll refer this to as the statement. Arising from the statement, I had asked for information on the occasions that Mr. Leong was called upon to make supplementary questions and clarifications in Parliament from August 2023 to May this year. The record provides no basis for the statement. It showed that Mr. Leong was called for supplementary questions and clarifications earlier than other members on many occasions, and that I had called him more than once on repeated occasions within the same item of business. Since Mr. Leong was present during, during the relevant sittings, I would know the facts, the statement is a gross misrepresentation of the proceedings of Parliament. The statement also suggests that Mr. Leong is somehow treated differently from other members and that his clarifications and supplementary questions have been deprioritized. The statement casts aspersions on my fairness and impartiality in calling members. This is a reflection of my character as the speaker touching on my conduct of parliamentary proceedings. On 22nd June, I wrote to Mr. Leong asking him for the basis of the statement made by him. On 25th June, Mr. Leong replied to me. I will now quote the relevant extract of his email. It says, the statement was a tongue-in-cheek response and a light-hearted comment made at the start of the interview to lighten the mood in the context of a podcast. I had no intention whatsoever to cast any aspersion on your impartiality in Parliament. I will be posting a Facebook clarification on the statement to remove any misunderstanding." Unquote. On the same day, Mr. Leong put up a clarification on his Facebook page, the relevant portion of which reads as follows. The speaker has since brought to my attention that my quip may be construed as casting aspersions on his impartiality in calling MPs. I would like to clarify that my comment was a tongue-in-cheek response to Parish's comment, one of the first to put their hands up and one of the last to be called. A re response that was meant to be a light-hearted one made at the start of the interview to lighten the mood in the context of a podcast. This was in no way meant to be a comment on Speaker's impartiality. Speaker has on various occasions called me ahead of other members." Unquote. In his 25th June reply, Mr. Leong also stated that he had no intention whatsoever to cast any aspersion on my impartiality in Parliament. He also requested for a meeting with me before the next parliamentary sitting to clarify the matter in person. I met Mr. Leong in my chambers last week on 26 June. At the meeting, I informed Mr. Leong that I had checked the parliamentary records since I was elected as a speaker. The fact is, it is not true that whenever Mr. Leong raised his hand to ask questions, he was one of the first, one of the last to be called. I told him that even if he did not intend to cast aspersions on my fairness and impartiality in calling members, the statement does give rise to such an innuendo and reflects on my character in conducting parliamentary proceedings. Mr. Leong repeated his explanation that the statement was made in jest to make the podcast more lighthearted. He added that he never said the speaker was unfair, nor did he intend to make any insinuation about my character or conduct in parliament. I explained to Mr. Leong that even if the statement was made tongue-in-cheek, and was a light-hearted comment, it 
does not change the fact that the statement is attributed to me, that there was no basis for the statement and it should not have been made. At the meeting, Mr. Leong stated that I had been fair to him when calling members to ask questions. I thanked him for his clarification and asked Mr. Leong to submit this in writing. After the meeting with Mr. Leong, I sent him an email on 26 June asking for a written statement from him in which he should apologise for giving the misleading impression that he was one of the last to be caught whenever the Speaker asked for questions and thereby misrepresenting the proceedings of Parliament and for implying that he was somehow treated differently from other MPs seeking to ask questions by the Speaker, which reflects that the Speaker is not fair and impartial. And also to acknowledge that I have conducted the proceedings of Parliament in a fair and impartial manner and have treated him fairly. Mr. Leong's reply was sent to me on 28 June, the relevant portions of which read as follows. And I quote, I would like to clarify that the statement was a tongue-in-cheek comment made spontaneously in response to Harish's comment. It was a light-hearted comment made at the start of the interview to lighten the mood in the context of a podcast. Neither Harish's comment nor my statement were scripted. We did not discuss beforehand what would be brought up during the interview. I had no intention whatsoever to cast any aspersion on the impartiality of the speaker. I would like to take this opportunity to state for the record that I'm satis satisfied with the time and opportunities that Speaker Sia Kemping has given me to ask questions since he took over as chair in August 2023. Mr. Speaker has on various occasions called me ahead of other members." Unquote. In his reply, Mr. Leong went further than his first reply to state that A, he was satisfied with the time and opportunities that I've given him to ask questions, and B, that I had on various occasions called him ahead of other members. I wrote to Mr. Leong again on 30th June, informing him that I was grateful for his clarification that he has no intention to cast aspersions on my impartiality as a speaker, that he was satisfied with the time and opportunities that I had given him to ask questions, and that I had on various occasions called him ahead of other members. However, I stated that his second clarification of 28 June did not contain the apologies requested for. In order to close the matter, I gave Mr. Leong a final opportunity to make a written apology and the necessary clarifications. So on 1st July, Mr. Leong wrote to me a third email. This was yesterday. The relevant portions of which read as follows. I quote, First, I thank you for accepting my clarification that I had no intention to cast aspersions on, my, on your impartiality as a speaker. Given that you accept that there was no intention to cast aspersions on your impartiality as the speaker, I trust you will agree that it would, it would not be accurate to make an apology that suggests an intention to mislead listeners on my part. However, to bring this matter to a close, I retract my words spoken on the Yala Bhatt podcast stating that I was one of the last to be called and confirmed I had no intention to imply that I was somehow treated differently from other MPs seeking to ask questions by you as Speaker, which reflects that you, as a Speaker, am not fair and impartial. For the record, I confirm that this has not happened to me under your term as Speaker." Unquote. So in this third email of 1st July, Mr. Leong retracted the statement and confirmed that he had no intention to imply that he was somehow treated differently from other MPs by me. Mr. Leong also stated that such unfair treatment had not happened to him during my term as Speaker. I have given careful and due consideration to the totality of Mr. Leong's explanations conveyed in his letters dated 25th June, 28 June and 1st July, and in his meeting with me on 26 June. I want to emphasise that members sitting in the House will know what happened in our proceedings. If you then proceed to say that something different happened in the House, even in jest, you are willfully 
misrepresenting our proceedings. The, rep the misrepresentation is made more serious if it reflects on the character of a fellow member or the chair. As honourable members, we should not be engaging in such conduct, whether in jest or otherwise. That is why I felt an apology was to be forthcoming from Mr Leung. Having said that, I also considered that Mr Leung had, firstly, agreed to retract the statement that he made on the podcast. Secondly, that he was satisfied with the time and opportunities that I had given to him to ask questions. Thirdly, clarified that I had on various occasions called him ahead of other members. And fourthly, confirmed that I had not treated him differently from other MPs in asking questions. I'm satisfied that Mr Leong's clarifications taken in totality have mitigated the misleading impression of the statement. I've also taken due note of his clarification that I've been fair and impartial. The clerk will be distributing all the above letters, recording my exchanges with Mr Leong to members for reference. I have also instructed that these be made part of the Hansard record. I now consider this matter closed.